Hi everyone and welcome back to the Tune Review. Um, first of all, sorry I haven't done a, a few uh, reviews over the last couple of weeks due to ill health. Um, but back up and running again now. I uh, hope you all had a cracking Christmas. Um, unfortunately, Boxing Day wasn't the greatest uh, result that we've ever had. Uh, Newcastle nil, Sheffield Wednesday won in a game where um, it's safe to say we didn't get going from the start. Uh, we looked very lacklustre, um, very clueless, which... Um, has crept into our game over the, the course of the last few, uh, certainly away games. You know, we've um, we've done what we've had to do in the games, put it that way, and we've, we've got through them, um, which people may say is a sign of a good side. Uh, is it a sign of a championship winning side? Who knows? Um, it is important that when we don't play well that we still pick up results. But for me, we're dropping too many results at home. Um, if it wasn't for Carl Darlow yesterday, it could have been two or three. Um, let's be honest about it. You know, we had a good chance in the first half um, off the crossbar, but did we really create anything else worth of, of note? Apart from Atsu's um, tremendous little run in the second half where um, he could inside, curl it with his left foot, good save by the keeper. Um, but Westwood, for me, wasn't bothered enough um, during that game. And, and Sheffield Wednesday came to us yesterday with a plan. Um, you know, the game kicked off and it was obvious they were going to be physical with us. Now, I've seen loads of tweets since last night and thinking, you know, dirty Sheffield Wednesday and, you know, they they, they just wanted to nail our players. Um, but if you look at it in more detail, Sheffield Wednesday came up yesterday and had a plan. They wanted to get physical with us. Um, they knew we didn't have a real strong man up front like, you know, Mitrovic is um, where he holds the ball. Dwight Gale isn't that kind of player. He's, um, he's a lot lighter than uh, Mitrovic is. Um, but he's not a kind of hold-up player. He's he's a he's a out-and-out striker. And I think Chevy Wednesday did the homework. You know, they, they roughed us up. Uh, yes, some of the challenges were a bit over the top kind of thing. But um, for me, Dwight Gale, he throws himself to the ground too much, and that really really bugs at me. You know, when he's when he's turned a defender and he's running at them, and then suddenly he feels like a hand on his back. He'll just go down as if he's being poleaxed. Now, I don't like that from Dwight Gale. I'd rather he just he's got the pace to get past these defenders. You know, just knock the ball past them and run with it, go with it, and, and beat the man and score a goal. You know, but for me, he's thrown himself down far too easy. And yeah, he took a couple of clatterings yesterday. Um, but Sheffield Wednesday came to do a job. They wanted to rough us up a bit. They wanted to get under our skin. Um, and let's face it, there's teams gone to places like Arsenal and Man United and Manchester City and places like that have done the same thing. And they've roughed them up and caused them all sorts of problems. And that's exactly what Sheffield Wednesday did to us yesterday. But on the other hand, Sheffy Wednesday played the better football as well. Um, now, I'm going to be honest in, in my reviews. I'm not going to sit here and blow smoke up anyone's arse when it doesn't need blown up. You know, um, if I see a bad performance, like I say, a good performance, I'll start praising. But if I see a bad performance, then, you know, criticism has to come some, from somewhere. And for me, not enough players did it last night. There wasn't enough energy. There wasn't enough passion. Um, you know, very, very lacklustre, which is, which is unlike a Rafa side. And... Sheffield Wednesday for me played the better football, better team first half by a, by a country mile. Um, you know they had a, a opportunities which Carl Darlow, as I say, if it wasn't for him, two tremendous saves in the first half. I was right behind that goal, um, and they were really really good saves. But Sheffield Wednesday seemed to control the middle. Uh, our passing was all over the place. Um, one player we definitely missed, which is uh, been picked up on by every Newcastle fan, and that's John Joe Shelby. We missed his his vision, his accuracy on his passing. You know, Hayden tried a few, you know, long balls, didn't come off. Shelby start balls. Callback tried a couple, which a couple, to be fair, the callback came off, but they're not the same kind of player. Um, so we just ran out of ideas. We couldn't create. And as I say, second half came. They scored a goal. Again, a brilliant save by Carl Darlow, but their guy, Leuven's on hand just to nod it in. And we went 1-0 down, but we didn't really threaten until Atsu came on, like I say, down the right-hand side, cut in brilliantly onto his left foot, whipped the shot in, and it was kind of at that height where the goalkeeper was 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 really on it, you know, and he, he tipped it over the bar. But apart from that, um, a Mitrovic header later on uh, from a corner, which Westwood got down to quite easily. Now, looking at the game in general, where did we go wrong? Well, I think... You know, as, as much as I love Rafa, he's got to take criticism at some point. And yesterday, I didn't understand the substitution of bringing Perez on before Mitrovic. Um, Diame had another one of those absolute stinkers, um, which he's having far too many of, um, in my opinion. Far too many stinkers. And then you've got uh, Perez coming on, who's 
like powder puff. And he, he just, he's not strong enough on the ball. He, he's complaining at the referee. That man has gone so far backwards. It is unbelievable. And, you know, it's very, very frustrating because the guy's got the talent, but he's just going backwards. And it's, he just doesn't seem like his heart's in it at the minute. Um, so I didn't understand Perez coming on first. For me, Mitrovic should have been on the pitch, gone with Gale up front, and do what we did to Norwich. You know, lock, knock the ball long. You know, I didn't understand that when, you know, eventually Mitrovic comes on, we're still knocking it across the back four, dilly-dallying, knocking it backwards. And that is pissing so many supporters off. You know, you can hear the frustration when we're coming forward and then suddenly we'll knock the ball back and uh, start again. Yes, fair enough when it's nil-nil or early doors in the game and you want to get a foothold in the game. But when you're 1-0 down the second half, you've got two strikers on up front. One is a big man who can knock it down. And then, you know, we just dilly-dally and playing along the back four. Um, and it, it just wasn't going to work. Um, so, Rafa, as much, like I say, as much as I love you, that was, a, a, for me, a big mistake not bringing Mitrovic on earlier. Um, Paul Dummett I've said enough about him in my videos so far this season now the guy there's a guys around me just can't understand it either how he manages to get in the first team um, you know I'm not going to go on and on I just don't get it Paul Dummett I do not get a left back and yes he makes last ditch tackles every now and again but he was out of position so many times last night it was embarrassing really was embarrassing I've got no problem with the two centre halves I think Kieran Clark and Lascelles, um, you know, will will grow as time goes on as well. But I think Kieran Clark's been an absolute find. Um, you know, he comes into central defence um, due to an injury earlier on in the season, and he's never looked back. He's been superb. Um, right back for me, and he does a decent job. Um, he's not the same type of player as Yedlin. Yedlin is quick moving forward. I think he is the better defender. So where do you look for that? I think home games maybe go with Yedlin because we've got to go with teams at home. We've dropped too many points at home this season for my liking. Points that we should not have dropped. The likes of Huddersfield, Blackburn, Wolves, and now... Now these... and You know, Sheffield Wednesday, like I say, had a game plan. We couldn't get around it. Just couldn't get around it at all. And it was so frustrating. Um, middle of the park. What I would have done, and, and, and I put this out on Twitter last night, that I would put Gufran in for callback because Gufran is a workhorse. He will get the jobs done in midfield. In the, in the middle of the park for me. You know, his, his defending is there for everybody to see when he comes back and, and, and doubles up with Dummett, because he's got to. Um, you know, but him in the middle, Atsu left wing, Richie right wing, who, Richie was poor again last night. You know, just, just seemed off the pace. Diame, I wouldn't even give him the time of day at the minute. He's just absolute useless. Um, but who do you play in the number 10 role? That, that, that's another question. Perez not doing it. You know, Diame is not doing it. So, you know, do we maybe look at putting Gufran there and Atsu on, or Atsu in that, that kind of, that role? You know, it's a decision that Rafa's got to make, but surely he can't keep going with the Diame and Perez. It's just not working. And uh, Gale up front was very, very quiet last night, but I'm certainly not going to slag Dwight Gale off. He's been, a, he's been superb for us this season with his goals. But one thing that really stands out is there is still positions that we need to sort out in this transfer window. And it's very, very important that Rafa looks hard at this. We've got a game against Forest on Friday night. That's another big game. We owe them big style for what happened down there. Um, and I hope Lansbury gets absolute pelters from our supporters. Um, but, you know, we, we, we were just powder puff last night. There was, there was nothing there to get us going. Um, I've seen lots of things going around about people, you know, saying jumping on the bandwagon and slagging Newcastle off, uh, you know, panicking and, uh, you know, we've lost one game. Yes, We've lost one game, but we've now lost four home games to teams that we should not lose to. You know, I'm not being big-headed or anything like that, saying, oh, you know, teams should get walloped when they come to St. James's Park. But if you look at the four games we've lost at home, we've never performed. It's just been awful. And that should not happen to, a, you know, a team like Newcastle at the minute because we should be up there. We should have St. James's Park as a fortress. For me, the atmosphere is crap. You know, unless we get, you know, something to, to, to sort of shout about, there's only the Gallagher corner who try and make an atmosphere. The rest of the ground, it just goes silent far too much for me. And I don't understand that. You know, it's a massive ground. It's got a massive atmosphere when everyone gets going. But for me, there's just far too many people just turning up, sitting there watching the game and, and not showing any passion. You know, so if we don't show passion as supporters, then the players 
they won't show passion either. That's my opinion. And it, yes, it does work vice versa as well. The players need to show us some passion for us to get behind them. But for me, I've heard a lot of people say it as well. For me, St. James Park has been very, very quiet this year. And too many away fans are coming up singing, is this a library? And shh, all the time. And it's really pissing me off. Um, but, you know, we look forward now to, to Friday night and Nottingham Forest coming up here. And we better, better perform because... Brighton have won again today now. They're two points clear at the top. We cannot afford to drop points because in this division, teams can catch you very quickly and you soon get sucked back. And that's not where we want to be. We do not want to be anywhere near the playoffs and take that lottery chance. It just, it can't happen. You know, we've established a gap. We need to keep that gap. And by doing that, we need to keep winning. And it's very, very important. Um, so for me, you know, the, the criticism has to come to Rafa and the team yesterday. Um, some of the decisions from Rafa were wrong. The team's performance was was completely wrong, and and some of the players in that team shouldn't even see a black and white shirt again. Um, but that that's my opinion, and, and I've I've sort of bottled this up over the past six or seven games because we've kept winning, but just and we haven't been performing brilliantly, but we've been scraping through. And people will say, yes, that's a sign of a good side, but sometimes it's a sign of what's coming, and we've got to now nip this in the bud before. Nottingham Forest come on Friday, get the confidence back by getting a few goals against them. So that's my view on the game. Leave a comment and tell me what you think of it or catch me at Twitter at the Toon Review. Um, I'm also trying to get an Instagram account going at the Toon Review as well. So just go on Instagram, search the Toon Review. Um, there's a few photos on there. Um, I'm going to try and start building that over the next few weeks as well. So uh, get yourself following us on there. And obviously um, keep subscribing to YouTube. Uh, if you're new to the channel, do hit the subscribe button. Uh, if you like the video, obviously hit the like button. Um, I'm not going to sit here and beg like some other people do, but just if you've enjoyed it, just hit the like button. I would be interested to hear what you think of the match uh, and what you think should be the lineup for Friday. Um, is the midfield role a concern? Is number 10 role a concern? Should he just go with Mitrovic and Gale up front? Who knows? But thanks very much for watching, and I'll catch you on the next review of the Forest game on Friday. Thanks very much. Take care.